Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today, I have a great technique to share with you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the technique. Today, we are going to make this fun fold pop-up card. You need two solid cardstock and one pattern paper. The stamp set that I'm featuring today is this um, stamp set with these cute little uh, sort of Easter kind of animals. You've got the bunny, you've got the little chicky, and a little lammy. That's what I use. Here is the stamp set. So it's got, actually it's got two lammies, it's got two chickies, and then a bunny. And then it's got some nice sayings. Um, Welcome spring for some bunny special, have a sweet Easter, Easter wishes, have an extra amazing day, and then happy Easter. And then this little guy here is actually holding a, a banner that says Easter. So the sample card that I made with this when I did the catalog review is this one. I think it just is nice. It shows the, oops, it shows the um, cute little, little animals all colored in. The finished card is going to be five by seven. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. So this card is five by seven and my directions are for this five by seven card. You can potentially make this a four and a quarter by five and a half. I just don't have the measurements on, um, on my blog post. Okay, so let's get started on this card. I did use, um, on this one I used melon as the card base which is our color of the year. That's why I tried to use it. And then for the second cardstock color, I used Seabrook. And then for the pattern paper, this is the January um, to March mix-ins. And I just really love this pattern. If you can see, it's like stitching, but it's all of the different colors, which I thought was nice. I thought it tied it all the colors together. So there's like melon, honey butter, probably sage, um, Seabrook or Glacier in there. I'm calling it Seabrook because I use Seabrook, but really I think it's Glacier. Okay, so you know our um, mix-ins, you only get one sheet of the pattern paper, so I'm, I can't do exactly this card. So I think I'm going to use this one with the honey butter. I really, I, I kind of fell in love with this. But I think I might use this side and then use this pattern paper, which again ties the colors together um, on the squares. Okay, so let's do that. And then I don't know about the colors of the cardstock. I was thinking maybe I'll do the card base this color, the honey butter, and then the. Yeah, and then the second layer, I'm going to use the melon. We'll leave Seabrook off of this one. Let's see how that looks. What we need to do is we need to get a piece of 7 by 10 cardstock. That's going to be our card base. So pick whatever color you want to be the card base, and then we need a 7 by 10. Okay, so... Here it is at the 10 mark, and then I'm going to cut it at the 7 mark. So this is my card base, okay, um, and then with the same color, um, we need two squares that are two and a half inches, and then one square that's three by three. So I'm going to cut this three inches and make my three by three. And then do a two and a half, do two two and a half by two and a half. Two and a half by two and a half, and two and a half by two and a half. And again, these measurements are on the blog post. Okay, so these are going to be 
the base of the diamonds. So one three by three and two two and a half by two and a half. So this one is three by three and then this one is uh, two and a half by two and a half. Okay, so we got, this is cardstock color one. Cardstock color two um, is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So that's a piece that you're going to layer on the inside here. So it's this, the blue piece here, the Seabrook. Okay, so that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And this one's hard, it's right on the elbow of my thing, but I'm gonna put it there, six and three quarters. Okay, and then we need two pieces that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters. So again, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do six and three quarters, and then two and a quarter. Okay, so these two pieces are what's going to line the inside of each of these, okay? Okay, and then we need, then we need uh, two two and a quarter by two and a quarter and one two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Okay, let's see what we can get here. Uh, so two and three quarters. So and two and three quarters. And again, this is going to layer on top. If you want, you don't have to put. Oh, we only need one of these. Um, you don't have to double layer this if you don't want to. But I feel it gives it a nice. Um, strength to it. Okay, so we need one, two, and three quarters, and two, two and a quarter. Here's a two and a quarter, two and a quarter, and then one more. Make this one two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Okay, so these are going to layer on my yellow pieces. Okay, now from one of the colored cardstock, and you will have enough from the second, the second piece, you need to get a three inch by four inch piece. And that's going to be this pop-up. I don't know if you can see the, the pop-up here. See this blue pop up? Okay, that piece is three by four. And you'll have enough of the second color to do that. Four inches by three inches. Okay, so this is the second colored cardstock. I think we're good with that one. And now we have to do the pattern paper. So the pattern paper is what's layered on top. Okay, I just was trying to catch up on the comments. Um, so like I said, I think I'm going to um, cut this pattern paper here that I have the, the stitched side is, um, I'm gonna use this paper. And for this paper, you need it to be four and a half by six and a half for the big one in the middle. And the six and a half is the up and down part. So if your paper is directional, like mine is directional because I want the lines to go up and down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it on its side and cut the six and a half. Okay. And then cut this into four and a half. And then I need two pieces that are two inches. 
So these come out to be two by six and a half. Okay, now here's where you can make a decision. So I'm gonna put these, you know, here. On this card, you can see I did not put pattern paper on top of the diamonds. You can. If I were doing this, I would probably flip it over to the other side. You know, use the other side so there's a little bit of difference, distinction, so you might want to find a piece of paper that when you flip it over, there's like a nice difference between them. But I'm going to try and use this paper. I've got a little strip of it. I think I have enough to um, put it on there. And the reason I want to use this is because it has all of those colors. It's got the melon, it's got the honey butter, and it's got the Seabrook. So, um, I think that it will tie it all together. So for this paper, for the pattern paper, you need um, a two by two. You need two of them and a two and a half by two and a half. So this piece you need a two and a half by two and a half, and this one you need a two by two. So let's see if I have two and a half. Okay, and I do have a two and a half here. Just, like I said, just enough, two and a half by two and a half. That's gonna go right on there. And then a couple that are two by two. I did not do this on my sample card but because I wanted the um, animals to stand out on the solid color. But this one I am going to use it because my pattern paper, my pattern paper is only one color, right? This pattern paper had all of the colors in it, so I didn't feel like I needed something to tie it together. With just this one, I feel like I need something to, to tie all of the colors together, okay? Okay, so I think I have all of the papers cut for what I need. So again, we've got the solid one, solid cardstock two, and then the pattern paper um, three. And you can get all of this out of, you know, one sheet of each of the two solid colors and then one sheet of the pattern. And you actually have enough um, that you've got some paper left over for the pattern paper. Okay. Okay. So. The first set of instructions is to take the seven inch by 10 inch cardstock and score at two and five inches along the long side. Okay, so here it is. So this is the long side. We're going to score at two and a half and five. So here's my little scoring Fiskars. So since our paper is double-sided, right, that there's two different colors on the side, think about which color you want to show, and whichever color you want to show should be facing up. I want the darker side to show up this honey butter, so I'm going to keep it facing up. Okay, so let's do two and a half. And then five. Okay, so I don't know if you can see how it's scored, but the paper is scored there. Okay, so um, now it says to fold the card in half at the five inch score line. So I'm going to score this in half, fold it in half along that five inch score line. And so this is where you get the five by seven card. Okay, because this card is seven inches tall and five inches Let's do it down here so you can see the, well, you can't really see, but it's five inches this way and seven inches tall. Okay, so you fold it in half along the five inch score line to get the five by seven paper, but then we're going to fold this piece back to make a Z fold card. 
okay? So you're going to fold the, the front piece backwards to make the Z fold. We've made a Z fold cards like this before. Okay. Okay, so now we, let's just start layering our paper. So let's take the second colored cardstock and it's going to go here and here. Take the bigger piece of your second cardstock and then center it. You're going to have about an eighth of an inch around, all the way around. Okay. And make sure you use the same side of your cardstock. Like I'm using the dark side up on all of these melon. This is melon. I just think these are kind of Easter colors. And this one you want to center. I'm trying to make it so you can see. You want to center it on this center panel. Make sure it does not overlap with the fold at all. You won't be able to open and open and close it. Okay? And then make sure you line it up at the top so they look even. Now this one, put, put this one down. Okay, so now we've got that all stacked. Okay, now um, layer the pattern paper on top of the second color. Okay, so take the pieces of pattern paper and attach it. I am, well, originally I was going to use this kind of square dotted paper. I decided to use the stripes because since I wanted to use the small dots pattern paper on the diamonds, I felt like it would, it would clash, the dots would clash too much with these dots. I thought having the stripes and then the dots would be better. Okay. Here we go, get the next piece down. And again, just center these on the card, right on top of the sec that second color card stuff. I don't know, now I'm kind of wishing I used the Seabrook as my base, but oh well. Center this here. Okay. So we centered that. Okay, now we're going to put together the squares. Um, so you're going to layer the second color card stock on the first color. And then if you're going to use the pattern paper, you would layer those now too. Okay. Um, I did not on my first one. So it looks like this, right? I did not use pattern paper on this card. So you can choose that if you want to or not. Okay. So let's just layer these and make sure you put the, there's one bigger one. One of them is bigger than the others. So make sure you pay attention to that. I'm just going to layer these. I do like this kind of bullseye design on that too but I wanted to go with a kind of a unobtrusive pattern because I feel that the stripes on my card is so so bold okay so I'm layering the melon on top of the honey butter now I'm going to lay the 
paper, with that pattern paper. And then one more. So this is the time you can put on the pattern paper, but like I said, in the other one, I didn't. Okay, so now we're going to take the two smaller squares. So let's take these two smaller squares and take our card base and close it. Right, we're gonna close it. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this and line it up with the point of the diamond at the top, right on the fold, and the bottom point of the diamond on the fold. Okay? So if you can see this, let me, let me push it back like that. You see how these are right along the fold. And so you'll notice that this side is not taped down to anything. So we're going to put adhesive on it, but we're only gonna put adhesive on one side of the diamond. Right? So just put adhesive on one side. Okay. I'll get a little bit down here. So again, line it up, line it up. Line up the diamonds and then layer it down. Okay, if you get any, any on this back side, use your rub and erase marker or eraser and you know remove the adhesive okay now take your other smaller diamond and we're going to line it up you're going to line it up at the bottom and then line this up along the edge too okay so we're going to meet in the middle the two diamonds will meet in the middle okay so we're going to line this one up right on the edge and again this side isn't going to be attached to anything so only adhere it on you know one side of the diamond okay so I usually start at the bottom because you want the bottom to be like exact and then match up the the diamond points and then put it there okay perfect Okay, so now's the point where we're going to make this pop, the pop-up feature. And really, this is how a lot of the pop-ups are made, okay? So it's a small pop-up on this one. There's one pop-up, but... Okay, let's take our piece of cardstock that's three inches by four inches, okay? And then we're going to score it at one, two, and three inches. So every one inch, we're going to score it. And this is something that if you didn't want it to pop up as much, you could make it, you know, maybe make them half, half, half. If you wanted to pop up more, you can make it more. If you didn't want it to be as obtrusive, you know, as big, you can make it smaller. But the technique is kind of the same. Okay, so we scored it, I don't know if you can see, at one inch, two inch, and three inch. Okay, and now we are going to fold along these. And you're folding, you're folding them all the same way. Okay, they're all like mountain folds. Right? Kind of like you're making a waterfall. Okay. And so it kind of makes the tube. Okay. Okay, so now um, let's take 
thicker card base and this is optional but if you want to get it centered this is what I would do take your card base and we're going to measure along the seven inch side so along the longer side right along the um, center fold get your ruler and let me get a pencil okay um, so you're going to measure down two inches from the top of the card on the longer side and make a small mark and then measure five inches down from the top and make another small mark so you see how I'm doing it here in this picture okay so from the top and I'm gonna do this kind of right on on this side of the fold because you can erase it you know in a little bit so I'm going to make it at two two inches and five inches and you'll notice that that is I just made really teeny marks here and here and that's just so you can center center this and there's a difference of three inches which is coincidentally how tall this is okay so um, so that's why you're there just so that you can get it centered okay So now let's add adhesive to this. And I'm going to add adhesive right here to the outer edge, right, to just this segment, okay? And this is the part that's going to stick down onto your card. Okay, so I'm just going to add adhesive here to just this part. Now I'm going to fold the two, the two sides in like this. See how it is? I'm going to fold the two edges in in the same direction. And then I'm going to line up line up this center fold. Right? Line up this right along the center fold of the card. Okay? And then along the 2 inch and 5 inch mark. Like make this meet within the two inch and five inch. And I find it kind of helpful if you kind of fold the card up a little bit. It helps you just really snap that in place. Because you want the fold on the pop-up to be exactly the fold in the, on the card. And you'll see if you don't get it exact, you'll be able to tell because it won't sort of close that way. Okay. So we did that on this side. Okay, so remember, I'm putting it between this two inch mark and the five inch mark. And at this point, you can kind of maybe erase it, erase the marks, although it will be pretty much covered by the paper. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put adhesive on this part right here this segment, we're going to put adhesive on this segment and then fold it back and fold it down. So basically you're adding adhesive to the edges of uh, like the two segments on the end of your little tube. And you don't want to like do the adhesive right on top of your card like I did. I'm just trying to keep that in the frame. Okay. And then then just put it down and then see if it see if it will open and close okay so see how now I have this little tube right there I don't know maybe that's a maybe that's a good design there so, so you can see the tube there now what we're going to do is get this center pop up onto onto here so you can kind of see it is just taped down it's, right it's just just taped down right here on the top of the tube okay so what you want to do is kind of shut it you know how the card should shut and then hold you want to put this up against the edge here put one of the diamond edges see how I'm holding it like a diamond put one of the diamonds right against the edge of the pop-up part okay and then you 
want to try and center it. So you're not taping it down or anything right now. We're just kind of getting a feel for it. And you can kind of tell if it's centered because um, you want the center here to kind of be in line with the center here. Okay, so let me look at my T-square. I did get the new Close to My Heart T-square. And maybe I'll do a review of it some other time. Um, but if we... Let me line this up a little bit. You don't have to do this. I mean, you can eyeball it. I'm just showing you that this line here should line up with, with the point there. But you'll notice that it, you see how it hangs over the edge a little bit? So what you wanna do is turn it over and kind of draw the line here. Okay. And I drew a line right here. But you wanna make sure that um, this is centered first before you do that okay so th remember this isn't glued down so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut right along that line so let's cut here okay so i'm, I'm cutting there Ooh, that's not going to look that great okay well here you go what we're going to do is you had it like this but now we're going to flip it around and put the part that you cut up against up against here. So now your point should come right up against the edge, right? It should be flush with the edge. Okay? So you still have the points here. Okay? So now what we're going to do is Basically, we're just going to decorate the first sort of one inch of this side. And you just have to kind of eyeball it or use your versamat here to see how much you want to, to add adhesive to. So I'm only adding adhesive to it just a little bit, literally just the corner of that. And now I'm going to try and center this center this and push down so now it's now it's stuck down so it should be able to close easily and open easily i don't know it looks like maybe i've got just a little bit of overhang here not much it's 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 actually really closing and opening easily but i'm hearing a I'm hearing like a resistance. It's kind of scratching. You can hear it. You hear that scratching? Yeah. Let me just, okay. Just trim it just a tad. And the good thing is you really don't see this part that's on the inside. Okay. Not too bad. And it's still making a noise. No, okay. It's, done, it's not making the noise anymore. Okay. And there's a basic design of the card. See how easy it is? Now, here's where you want to sort of think about it. Like, now you can decorate it however you want. On my card, I put these little animals here. The one thing you have to think about is um, this one is a little bit hidden. Okay, so if you make a sentiment, you might want to keep that in mind. For example, when I first designed this card, I was planning on putting this guy where he said Easter on the inside. And I could, you know, I could put him because I thought it'd be cute that it says Easter. But, you know, part of the word is is kind of covered up and I don't I don't really like that. So then I added um, the Happy Easter sentiment here instead. Okay. Um, I have I have cut out some little guys here that I'm going to put on. I, I did the other lammy so you can see the two different lammies. Aren't they cute? This is the one with the basket. This guy's got a little chicky on his head. 
and I did put it a little bit to the right side. Okay. So I'm going to adhere these down. I'll probably put them in the same general location. But here's what I was thinking. I was thinking um, this would be cute with balloons. Wouldn't this be cute birthday card? Put some balloons and then have the balloons pop up. Like put a bouquet of balloons there. I thought that would be really, really nice. I would have made a sample card for that. But, you know, the whole point of doing this particular design was to feature these these guys. So, um, I've already colored these and um, cut them out because, like I said, I, I'm not feeling super great. I just was I want to just get it done so I am like I said I am going to put this not centered but kind of to the a little bit to the right and you can decide you know like open and close it like you can still see his face I think that's kind of cute so that's a good position but what I was thinking like for a birthday card wouldn't it be cute to have like some balloons or say happy birthday or something here and then the uh, bouquet of balloons Ooh, right it would be so cute to have the balloons pop up and then the last thing is to put on the, yeah, and you don't have to, you can put on some kind of sentiment. I did use this like little banner and that banner actually, and I use this all of the time. This is the waterfall thin cut set, you know, to make those waterfall cards, but it comes with, it comes with a banner and it comes with this banner. And I find a lot of our sentiments fit on this banner really nicely. And there's also a, um, like a swirled banner. The problem with that one is, um, it's not a problem, but you have to, you know, kind of make your stamp, your stamp kind of be um, in the wavy pattern on your block. But almost every time I need to use a banner, I use this. I use this set for that banner more than anything else. So I'm so glad I bought it at the time. So I already have some of these stamped. I wasn't sure what color I'd want to use, so I did several colors. I did for some bunny. Nice, happy Easter. I might do the blue, the Seabrook, only because the there is Seabrook in the dots, and I don't have any Seabrook on the card. Um, I really, I don't want... So let's say I stamped, I have Happy Easter for somebody special and have a sweet Easter. Those are all cute. But I think I'm going to do this one, Happy Easter. And if you want, you could, um, see he's kind of covering up this, the bunny's face a little bit. I think I might. Let me see. Can I, can I move him over just a tad? Let's see if I can move him over just a tad. Let's see if that helps at all. No, I still think I'm going to, I'm going to cut the end of this. So I'm going to make it just a banner going one, one way. And then if I don't like it, I have these other ones I can pull back on, but there we go. I'm just going to cut off the flagged in. Now when you put this down, if you do put something like this, um, oh god, now I don't like that. I think I did too much. I could put it there, I guess. So I would have liked it to be up against the white, or the honey butter. Let's see. No, I'm going to keep it. Okay, if you put this down, some of it may stick off. You see how this piece sticks off? So you don't want to put adhesive, you don't want to put adhesive there. Right, so just watch how far it sticks out. This one I think is pretty much I'm going to use all of it. 
and you can you know you can eyeball it if you want to be right in the center or you can measure it okay there you go happy Easter and you can put if you want to put sparkles or something okay so if you want to put sparkles or something on this you can I didn't because I felt there was a lot going on but um, some of you might think like where where can you sign the card so on this one I haven't done anything because I obviously I didn't want to ruin it before I showed you um, but you can stamp on here like I might I'm going to stamp maybe something like right here that might be covered up and then sign down here or you can sign on the back of the card but I think that let's try I'm not sure in the stamp set, it says, um, I have, since I have Happy Easter here, I'm going to put have an extra special, amazing, have an extra amazing day. Let's see if that's going to be too big. The sentiment's nice. Let's see if we can put it someplace and it be, uh, see, it's, you can kind of put it here, but. If you put it right there, let's see if that'll be covered up. Well, yeah, you could do that. Let's try that. Look how that is. Tell me what you think. You think I should try this? So I have the stamp there, and when you pull it, it's going to say have an extra amazing day. The only problem is part of it's going to be on the blue, and I think the difference in layers might be a problem. But we could try it. But you can pick a sentiment that is smaller if you want. Or you don't have to even put anything in there. Because that's why I put the sentiment here. But you could put something here. Okay, that's, I'm going to try it and see. Although, you know what? Oh, yeah, I'll try it on here. Like I said, I don't have any of this left over. So. Let's just try and see. And if somebody gets this card... And it's messed up. You know why? Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scratch piece of paper. Let's just put this here. At least maybe it'll be the same level. Let's see. Let's see if this will work. Because like this is three layers of paper. Okay, so you know, before I stamp that, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to kind of draw this line here. I'll erase it, then I'll kind of know where to keep it in. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's stamp this here. And I'm going to put the G from Amazing right at the end of the pattern paper. Ah, oh, okay. There you go. I think that's not too bad. And yes, it is patterned. So you're stamping on pattern, but I think that's perfectly fine. Okay, let me clean this off. I think actually I really am happy with how that turned out. It was better than what I thought. Okay, let me, let me see if I can erase with this eraser. Yeah, they're just it you erase make sure you don't go over the black too soon so you don't smear it okay so let's see how that is so it's covered up it says happy easter have an extra amazing day i love it i really really love it like that okay and then you can sign let me see i'll sign it so you can see Got my black Le Pen, which apparently is back in stock now. Okay, I'm going to take the pencil again. Let's see. I'm going to sign it here. Close. Okay. And if you don't want this on your card, like, like I said, you can stamp on the back. A lot of people do that. A lot of people stamp things on the back or sentiment and sign on the back. 
But look how it's covered up when you close it. So I love it. And then um, the stamp set we use today is the Sweet Easter stamp set. So another option I was thinking, like I said, was balloons for a birthday. I think that would be fun. Also, I think flowers. Flowers, like have different flowers and then a, like a bouquet pop up. I think that would be great. Like for Mother's Day or even for Easter. Um, I was thinking about trying the um, Isabella. Isabella flowers because I really love the Isabella flowers from last year to make one. So that would be pretty too. Okay. If you like any of the products you see in this video, go to thecraftychemist.ctmh.com. I have a Facebook business page, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I do live demos every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time. I also have a Facebook group called The Crafty Chemist Presents CTMH that I invite you to join. You can share any artwork. I also have an Instagram and TikTok, Crafty Chemist Designs. And you can learn more about the measurements and such on this card on my blog, Periodically Crafty dot blogspot dot com. Thank you.